Alrighty, folks. Um, as I told you at the top of the hour, I have special guests in the studio tonight, and our first one is here. Miss Marcy is here in the studio with me this evening. Good evening, everybody. So Marcy is going to be playing over at the 10th Annual Fort Worth Blues Fest over at Lola Saloon. Coming up here quickly in about 11 days uh, at uh, Lola Saloon in Fort Worth. And you will be on from 2 to 2.45 yes. with your Texas Sugar Daddy. So let's start with that. Who, who will be coming with you? Who are your Texas Sugar Daddies? Well, as you know, my partner in crime, Dave Burris on guitar, George Guerin on bass. And our drummer uh, got a church gig. We know the story. So... We're in the works of finding a fabulous sub drummer for the gig. <laughs> Substitute drummer, not sub drummer. There you go. <laughs> and um, tell them what kind of stuff you'd be playing. We play that. We just heard absolutely that, that song that you've said is about me. <laughs> <laughs> that I am Sugar Brown. You are. You are. <laughs> you match the FBI that, profile. Well, and you Sugar know, Brown. I was actually listening the other night. Joanna was in here subbing, and she played that song. And where you say she thinks I owe her money, and I thought you do owe me money. <laughs> I am Sugar Brown. <laughs> Everybody owes you money, girl. <laughs> I know this time of year, yeah, just a little bit, and that's a good thing. But anyway, so um, this is not the first one of these you've done for me. You've done several of them now. The yes, Fort Worth one. I'm very proud. So, of them but this you. is the tenth one, which is kind of a milestone. Yes. Can you believe it? I, I used cannot. to go to the festivals. I used to see everybody playing Deep Ellum in downtown in Fort Worth. And then I think, oh man, I want to do that. Yeah. And then, and now you do. Now do. And now you do. And now you do this one. And we're very much looking forward to this one. It's uh, Fort Worth's biggest blues event of the year. It seriously is, folks. And remember, those tickets are more at the door. I tell people this every time, and then they show up at the door and they're like, well, I heard they were $20. Well, if you buy them in advance, mow with the dough. More at the door, always for KNO in advance. <laughs> so you can get your advance tickets now by going to our website at knon.org. You can also go physically over to Lola's and pick up your tickets because they've got them over there for sale. So whichever way you do it, folks, you want to do it now and get your tickets. We literally started selling tickets five minutes after we posted this event out on our KNON Facebook page. So they are selling. So don't get caught out and get us sold out and then you don't make it in. Get your tickets now. Yeah, it's a it's an all day thing. It's a whole thing. And it's a great way to see so many musicians who are working the circuit here in town all in one place. And for us, it's like a reunion. We get together. It is because we get to hang out and see each other, which people don't understand. We don't normally get to do that because if you're playing a gig on Saturday night and I'm playing a gig on Saturday night and somebody else is doing their gig somewhere, that we can't all be together. Yeah, we have to meet, meet for breakfast at 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at 2 p.m. <laughs> or dinner at 2 a.m., whichever way that, that works. Um, but uh, let people know a little bit about what's going on because you've got some stuff going on. You've got a song you were working on with a... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to play with a, a lot of wonderful musicians here in Dallas. And so I'm just branching out and trying new stuff and writing songs and collecting a little, compiling a little stack of paper like a hamster that I need to create music out of. <laughs> and it's exciting. No, it is creative exciting. Creative energy is yeah. flowing. I'm ready to write music, play more gigs. I'm fortunate enough to be playing a lot right now. And um, I want to keep doing that. Sure. So it's a good time to be Miss Marcy. That's debatable. <laughs> it is a good time to be Miss Marcy. By the way, on the way here, you know the firemen are out on the street corners. Oh, check this out. So, <laughs> I, so, I, so I rolled the window down and gave one a dollar bill and I wrote your phone number on it. You can thank me for that later if he calls. He was cute. I know how you like a man in uniform. I do. I do. <laughs> I'm doing a public service for you there. I do. My phone's ringing. I wanted to... <laughs> it could be him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my, my gig, the fire department came and as each one were jumping out of the truck, I was like, oh, oh, what? oh, oh, I might have to faint just so I can get checked. Did you, did you set Dave on fire just so the fire department would come? That wasn't very nice. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't want to take one for the team that way. That's the wrong thing to do. Fire festival style. <laughs> oh, my God almighty. Um, well, let's play another song for Please. people to give them an idea. Um, and then we'll have talk off the air that, you know, they can't listen to. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm playing stuff off the latest CD. Yes, this is the second record. It's entitled Deep Ellum. Okay. And I'm fortunate and enough, thank you, Cano, for playing Deep Ellum a lot. I appreciate that. And will you have copies of this? We actually are out of CDs. We have vinyl. Okay. And we, of course, are on Amazon as well as we don't stream. 
Um, but you can buy it songs individually, old school style, you know, okay. like Nyan Sense per Good. song, if that's what you dig, or the whole album. Uh, but we do have vinyl for collectors. And, um, and you were bringing those over to Fort Worth with you? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, you want to do a Deep Ellen Mouth here? No, no, because you guys, uh, thank Cause you. Because we've been playing that, that a and lot. And I appreciate that. So, so, I don't know how much when this one plays, but this is a song I wrote about a drummer. <laughs> Since we have drummers on mine. A drummer <laughs> out of New Orleans. But I don't say much more than that because I don't know if his wife is still stalking me online. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so which one are we talking about here? You may do <laughs> I was going to ask if that was what it was. <laughs> it's everything. And, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Just looking at everybody that was on this particular song. She had Tim Alexander. Tim Alexander, yes. Yeah, Bobby Rest Chitwood was on there, West Star. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and Dave Burris. Me and Brother Dave Burris. Yeah. Yeah. Red Dread. Okay, so let's play this right now. This is Miss Marcy and her Texas Sugar Daddies. And you make me do things that I really shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Miss Marcy and her Texas Sugar Daddies, and come with me. <laughs> I don't know why men get so upset by that song. They don't. They like it. It's they some, uh, they own know. it. They claim it. They're like, yeah, she wrote that about me. Yeah, there you <laughs> they go. own that. I was going to ask if you were going to give me that man's number if I needed to call Andrea to get it. <laughs> I, <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope she's listening out there in that food truck. <laughs> I wouldn't share my I wouldn't share my info. I know. You. I know. But you know, we're we're a greedy bunch, you know how that is. <laughs> All right, so the next song we I, I wrote with a uh, who a uh, fellow Dallas musician who's coming up here to Cano in very shortly, yes. Yes he is. Pat Wick. So tell us about the song. Okay, so okay, so I have a heart, you know. I have, I have a sensitive so I wrote a love song. And it's kind of in the style of Solomon Burke. I saw him at the King Biscuit Blues Festival for the first time, and he just blew my spirit away. Oh, yeah. Of course, I bought everything I could by Solomon Burke. Yeah. And then this song just kind of came to me, and Pat and I were working on it, and then it came to fruition, and here we are. And here we are. And, yeah, Pat Boyack's on his way up here right now, so he'll be my guest here in the studio tonight, as well as Buddy Whittington, who'll be here in the second hour. Wow. So it is wall-to-wall -wall Texas blues talent in here tonight, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Speaking of the devil. Oh, is he coming in now? He show is. There he is. <laughs> you on the air? We're talking about you. You all really on the air? We're on, we are on air and we're talking about you. No, we're really on air. Is that on? Yeah, that's what that it's means. On. Yeah, and that thing up there too. Before, yes? You got your finger on the on the uh, drop button? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do anything that gets me in trouble. Don't you do anything that gets me fined by the FCC. No, we're talking about this song that you wrote with Marcy. Mm. You know about the, he doesn't even the remember baby arm song? No, you didn't write that one. <laughs> you wrote about it. You co wrote a song with her and but you, you played see, it's on it. funny if he remembers that one. That's such a good I, song. I, I just I just wrote about I heard it. The baby yeah. arm song. No, we wrote the ballad, remember? Do you still remember it? You can't you can't sing baby arm on public radio. <laughs> yeah, well, she did. I did. My <laughs> quote about my Miss Marcy and her Texas Sugar United's music. Nothing the FCC can find you for. That's, That's right. right. That's her new quote that they I just supplied limits. her with. They skirt the limits, folks. <laughs> well, this He's one's good. pretty straightforward. This is a love song. So yeah, we're going to play this yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah, we and wrote it's this song. got you on guitar. Yeah, yeah. we wrote it. We wrote yeah. it. Yeah. He didn't today. remember it, but we wrote it. I do remember it. Well, <laughs> okay. I know I wrote a song. Let's play it now. It'll, 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 uh, it'll jog is your memory it? if you hear it is again. Is this it? Is this the song? Yes. Okay, so let's do it right now. And this is I'm Going to Miss You. Okay. Okay, FCC, get ready to find us. I've turned the microphones on, and everybody's got a mic now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just tuned in, i got Miss Marcy and Pat Boyack here in the studio right now, and we've been playing some songs from Marcy and talking about her appearance coming up on the 14th at the 10th Annual Canoe Fort Worth Blues Festival at Lola Saloon. And those tickets are on sale now, folks. Remember, they are always more at the door. More so at the door. So get them in advance. Save yourself that money and, you know, buy some vinyl from an artist or oh yeah or buy the t-shirt or do something else with it or have a cool adult beverage you know what i think would be cool if you you know if you're going to be a collector to collect local musicians yeah vinyl of local i mean anybody can get like a, a big record but to have people come over to your house and like hey let me play this cat i heard down the street hey, let me play this cat that I saw at the Cano and Blues Festival. That's what happens if you go to Wes Race's house, which is what makes it so awesome. Uh, <laughs> he can do that. He can pull everything out and say, 
Yeah, let me play you this. Let me play. Or if you go to so Sumter. FCC's going to find her for that. Or if you go to Sumter, Sumter can do the same I'll thing. I'll remember half of the night when I go to Washington. <laughs> Place. Then it's been a successful evening. Yeah, right on. yeah. I remember the good stuff. That's there you go. That's all. Okay. We're not supposed to. We're not supposed to remember the not great <laughs> stuff. That's not the best <laughs> idea. I can't um, sit down. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, Marcy will be playing. Now we have music. The doors open at noon. The music starts at noon. Correct. So we have music until about nine o'clock that night. Straight. Constant bands. One stops, another one starts because we got two stages running. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will play from two to two forty-five. Correct, two to two forty-five, and we're just going to bring all of our energy with us and uh, introduce new music to you that you haven't heard before from us, anyway, <laughs> as well as our original music. And hopefully, get to meet some people. And so meet some new that's fans. a good thing. Have you been working on some new songs for Miss Marcy and the Texas Sugar Daddies? Always. How close are we to maybe another CD? Well, fingers crossed. Soon, soon. Yeah, yeah. Enough yeah. material. Get closer. Uh, close. Yeah. Cool. You know. <laughs> I know it's the constant struggle. I love to ask musicians this when they're because they all like. Well, like, man, I just learned five. Okay. Why There's are you? <laughs> yeah. Why are you? Why are you doing this to me? I'm never coming on your show again. <laughs> well, well one, of the, one of the things I was talking. It's funny. I was talking to somebody today. We were talking about streaming services and 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 stuff like that. And, you know, I told them, I said, the best, you know, streaming services are great, but a lot of things about streaming services is that they don't have, like, a lot of things, like, I went through all my CDs, mm -hmm. and everything I had that I got on streaming services, I got rid of, but I still got a big tub full of local artists. Sure, because not everything's out there. Not everything is on uh, Spotify or yeah. Amazon Prime. It's not always on there, so a lot of times, you know, number one, you're not getting... I think it's kind of scary, actually. I think we're going to forget a lot about a lot of local artists. No, I, I disagree you know. completely. I think collectors you want to arm are going. Over that? I, I, I would win. I'm going to embarrass you. Wait, are y'all going to arm wrestle me? I saw it. There is video. I disagree. With I can you. sell that. I think collectors and <laughs> smart collectors are, and music lovers are going to want these items because you can get anything that you want pre manufactured online and streamed into your phone. But to have a visual artistic collection of other people's music that's local or represents your sound. So well, I think that's like what he's the saying. Sound of Dallas. That no, the he's, streaming he's services are not. He's suggesting that because uh, <laughs> local artists aren't streaming like that, Get that the perhaps out. There's we're going to be forgotten. <laughs> and I would challenge that because I think there's enough music lovers in this town well, got, to support us all. I've got a bunch of CDs I bet you, that nobody's even know about that, that are bands of people, that people I, I talk to all the time. But I mean, <laughs> All I'm saying is I just think that... Um, Do you have your mansplain dictionary back here? <laughs> I'm not mansplaining. No, that's not it Do you have your mansplaining he's, how to open a gate? He's in here well, with just that. you and me I'll and no that. other witnesses. He's I'll, smarter he than that. He mansplained me how to open I'll a gate. Am I, I wrong? I did, yeah. Well, you needed it. <laughs> he said, push the button. We, we, <laughs> we'd still be sitting there. <laughs> oh, God, I'm out of <laughs> We'd still be sitting there. I'd still be sitting there. <laughs> what kind of flowers would you like at your <laughs> service? <laughs> But no, I mean, I, I just think, I think that I like, well, I think about records and think about, like, they said cassette sales are, like, huge last year. So what? I don't, it doesn't matter. I think, for me, that the CD is the ultimate. It was really the ultimate, but I mean. That might be a reflection but, of your age. Nah. Oh. Yeah, it will be, but uh, it will hold true, though. I would argue that vinyl is the best sound quality. So, so I well, think. Yeah, I think I, vinyl sounds great too. I think the <laughs> truth. Is, I think the truth of the matter is, is that casual music fans will go to things like streaming and doing stuff because they don't care. They listen to something exactly. for a while and drop it. It doesn't make them any different. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. If they hear it 20 years from yeah. now again on the radio, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that song, but they don't care. Mm -hmm. But diehard music fans want to own the music. That's why we've been hearing yeah. the same songs forever, for the last 50 years, because these radio stations, not KNOM, but these other these other radio stations play the same songs. Sure. You, hey. know, you know, Led Zeppelin had other songs. <laughs> I know well, it's kind of had these things called albums. You yeah, know, just talking about What's vinyl. An album? They did do you something know? other than Stairway to Heaven. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a lot of great cuts out there. They don't, they don't play, but it's because of just the mass consumption of it. Mm -hmm. Now that's mansplaining, right there. It's a good thing you came along. We couldn't have figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to um, take a pause here and take care of some business for the station while they Get dig it out. On. But I'm leaving the camera on, so there's photographic. <laughs> Because I can sell that. I can sell that later. Uh, we'll be right back. And for people that might have been living under a rock, give them an idea about where Pat Boya comes from. 
Or what, what? Or your history is. Well, my history. Well, I currently am not on probation. <laughs> so that's a, that's a plus. Have you checked that today? No, I okay. have not. Uh, I, I moved here, I'm from Helper, Utah, I moved here in 91 to be a musician, and I got really caught up into the blues scene here. Um, guys like Hash Brown, Brian Callaway, uh, were the guys like, like Brian, or Hash Brown, whatever you want to call them, they're the guys like him are the ones that mentored me and, and made me tapes, so like T-Bone Walker and Magic Sam, so I got really heavy into, into that blues side of it, you know, the real hardcore blues. Um, and from there, I went and uh, had the Prowlers with John Garza, Doug Swansea, and Jimmy Morello. And uh, and you guys re- released a few CDs, released did some a traveling. Few CDs, did some traveling, yeah. yeah. And then I played with Marsha Ball for mm-hmm. six and a half years. Uh, was on Grammy-nominated records with her. I think two or three, at least three, I think. And it was during that time that you did this CD that yeah. I just played that track yeah. off of. Yeah, the one nobody knows about, but cost me the most. Which they. was kind of a side <laughs> um, CD, but there's a tremendous cast of yeah. artists on there with you. Yeah, Sweet P. Atkinson, Larry Fulcher, just a few Kaz Kaznoff, my friend Kaz. Uh, Ruthie Foster. Ruthie Foster's on there, yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I played with Marsha, I got to know a lot of people down in Austin, because that's where she's based out of. So that was basically a Boston, an Austin record, you know, that was forgotten, unfortunately. But um, because of people like it. you, because <laughs> of people like you, it still gets heard. Yeah, it's a good CD. That. It's a very, yeah. very good CD. There's some yeah. great stuff on it. It truly is. Yeah. So, so now with the Javelinas, what are the plans with the Javelinas? You guys have original stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know you do some cover stuff when you play live. You have original stuff. Yeah. Um, will we see a Javelina CD anytime soon? Well, it's funny. <laughs> now that Marcy's not here. So I'm going to say this. She's not you you burned me a Javelina CD quite a while back that literally lived in my car. It was Those my are all demos. It too. was my favorite drive fast music really? because when I put that on, I would drive too fast. That's right. <laughs> Well, that's how good it is. Well, I tell people, I tell people what kind of band is it, and I said, well, if you want a drinking band, or you want a band that you can drink to, first off, get ACDC. <laughs> that's probably the ultimate band. But if you can't get ACDC, they have got a gig somewhere. Call the Havelinas, and we'll and we'll we'll show up. And we'll play. There you we, go. Because you're you bringing know. in all those influences that all of you have had yeah. in your very interesting individual careers yeah. and, and making a band out of it. Well, that, that CD you talked about, that was a demo. Uh, those are all demos. And so what we're going to do is we've recorded two songs, Black Snake Brown, which is based on a novel that was written about Lightning Hopkins. Cool. That's uh, Black Snake Brown and the other song is Boombox, which is about my boombox I've had yeah. for like 50 years almost. Still works, baby. Still plays my <laughs> music. And uh, so we got those two songs recorded. We did it at Empire Sound. Uh, studio out in uh, used to be Nomad out off I-35 Alex Gerstone's that studio Alex recorded us those the two songs we were talking about right now we're he's mixing them so we'll have those two songs and we're not really sure what we're going to do with them um, we really haven't talked about it to be honest with you we just wanted to record a couple songs sure. put them down and, and they're great they're amazing you know I mean uh, just Taz and Kenley's playing on them of course is top notch so it might be so, the start of a CD it might end up a 45 it, yeah it probably will be end up a 45 we're going to sh- show it to some people and see what happens but it's just it's just good music I mean our sound is basically like early 70s just a little bit more amped up than that but that's basically our sound we're a power trio we love old ZZ Top we love old ACDC and the songs kind of represent that so, you know? so I loved that thing you put, I think it was out on Facebook not too long ago, when you said a young kid told you that your music was just too in his face. Yeah, I'm am- that amazed might have, by that. That was shocking to me and made me sad, but then I also thought, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it blows my mind the amount of these young kids out there. I'm going on a rant. These young <laughs> kids on. out there, they see us and they, and they act like we're too loud. When I was their age... I was like, you guys aren't loud enough. Yeah, exactly. And kids these days. What is going on with kids these days with this? Like, you, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I mean, I was, you know, I mean. There's some little delicate flowers yeah, out there. Yeah, and, and we're, we're, you know, for all intents and purposes, we've been around. We've done a lot of stuff. So we're not exactly young guys. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I think we could, we could stand up on our own against any guy any young group of rockers out there it is a fabulous band and that's why i was so excited yeah. that you agreed well, to come you. and play the fest because i think people should see you i'm glad you, you said yeah come play 
you know? <laughs> no, people should see you more. They should see you out playing more. So you got a guitar with you tonight? Yeah. So you're going to play something for us tonight? Yeah, it's a lot too, but it'll do. It's the blues. This is. I want to thank my my buddies at uh, the Tone Shop in Addison, Texas, for letting me borrow this guitar to come in here to not do this. So that was cool. Yeah, it helps when you work there. <laughs> so I want to thank my buddies at the Tone Shop. But they know guys. you have it. Oh, they know I have. Okay. It, yeah. <laughs> of course, they all look. What's that? What do you got? What are you walking out with? <laughs> well, they have to check. That's yeah, they have to done. check. So, but um, it's a song off our very first record that Jimmy Morello wrote and sang. I'm not probably gonna do it no justice because Jimmy's a great singer, but hey, it's what I know. So the song's called Operator. <laughs> And I know that the singing thing is kind of new for you because in your bands before you always hired vocalists or you played behind vocalists. Yeah. So coming into this, well, I've been I've been singing for about eight years now. I think maybe seven years. Mm -hmm. I started the very first time I ever sang out public like that was at the old Pearl on Commerce mm -hmm. in downtown it, Dallas. Yeah, it was some type of benefit, and I remember I just started playing it on the guitar and and uh, just did it like a solo and stuff. And one of the uh, one of the things that made me keep going, it gave me the confidence, because singing's all about confidence. You gotta be confident to sing, because you can't see your instrument. Yeah. It's in your body. Yes. And you can't see it, you can't, it's hard to control. It is. And um, Chuck Nebbett, who from the Dallas Blue Society Records, God, Chuck came I up to me and said, I miss so Chuck too. And I owe Chuck a lot, in a lot of ways. Uh, but Chuck came up to me and said, I don't know what, what you just sang, but you gotta keep doing it. You gotta keep doing it, man. He goes, just keep doing it. And that, and that meant a lot to me. You yeah, because he would have known. He yeah. would be a guy that would know. And he also was not a guy that would just nicely say, oh, yeah, you sound great. He'd I've, tell you if you suck. I've said it many times. <laughs> Chuck did not suffer fools wisely. No, he did not. He burned He burned a lot of, he burned a lot of brains. 
Yeah, yeah but you know, he was, he was always up front with what he thought, and yeah, I, I liked that. Yeah. I, I, th- liked that I about would say him. I agree with him 90% of the time. So put Oh, I got on the wrong side of him when I first met him, and then we became <laughs> great friends. So I, was, I came to respect that. Yeah, I really did. So how did um, starting to sing when you were playing and stuff, how did that change your approach to playing live, writing songs? I mean, there had to have been... Well, it was, a, it was, a, it was kind of weird because when you're playing, you got to get used to playing and singing at the same time which is something I always had a hard time doing. And it was a slow start. There were a lot of gigs I did where they weren't great. They weren't great gigs. Well, you're learning. But I was learning, that's right. And I was, and, and I had, you know, um, I had some buddies that helped me out, Drew Elaine and Kevin Sherborn, Jimmy Morgan, guys like that who really helped me when I was starting out. And um, Well, and would, there was no place for you to hide with that too because you were already an established person here in town. So it wasn't like yeah. you had two or three years to yeah. mess around in the background where nobody knew. You had to learn in front of everybody. Yeah, well, I'm sure there was a lot of talk. Not a lot, a lot of talk, but there were people who were like laughing at me singing, which is fine. I really didn't care. I mean, once you get past the point of not caring, it becomes a lot easier. It does. And I didn't care anymore. All of life. That. All yeah. of life becomes a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know because I've known other guitar players that decided to do the same thing I was doing. And when they tried, everybody laughed at them behind their backs, you know. I'm sure that happened with me. But, I mean, like I said, it didn't matter to me. It didn't care because you get to the point when you got nothing to lose, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You got to do think. what you got to do. Yeah. Everybody isn't going to love you no matter what you do. Yeah. And it's I think just that's, the way it is. And I think that's what kind of like in the, with the songwriting stuff, um, I was worried because a lot of my songs are not just regular one, one, four, five blues. They're not some of our blues, period. And I was driving home from a gig and my uh, Kenley, Kenley Wolf was with me, my, the bass player in the Havilinas. He's such uh, a rock star. If you've never is. seen Kenley, he just walks in and you just know he's in a band. Yeah, Taz too. Taz <laughs> is six foot cool. six. But, uh, uh, but one thing that he said, I told him, I said, yeah, I've got all these this new material. Because we just got done playing a place that had a lot of blues. It was a heavy blues place. I'm not going to mention names, but the name of the place. But I said, but I don't think the people who came who, who were there would, would like the new songs I've been writing. And, and he said, what, it doesn't matter. It's all about what you want to do. Who cares if they like it or not? I mean, he said it. He used a lot more profanity than that. <laughs> but yes. but that's basically what he meant. Yeah, you know? thanks for cleaning that up. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, and that, that helps too when a guy like Kenley says, just do your thing. Sure. And so, and, and Taz has been real supportive too. So I've tried to sur- surround myself with, with people who are real positive and really positive about stuff and positive about trying new things and positive instead of making fun of me or anything I try to sing or I think people that know, have known you for a while would agree with me when I said you have blossomed in a new way with the Javelinas oh yeah I've because been like, I'm just you're, doing stuff I want to do yeah you, you know, are mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and you. you get that when you're up on stage you get that feeling it is the no hold back this is who I am I hope you like it and let's rock along and if you don't yeah. that's fine but I'm still going to do this and that's cool that works poverty poverty is can have a lot of freedom there's a lot of freedom in poverty there is like it, I like, and I, Janis Joplin saying famously, you know, nothing left to lose. Yeah, freedom's just another word for yeah. nothing left to lose. And and there's nothing more dangerous than a person who has nothing left to lose. Yeah. And that, that can be good and that can be bad. And so for me, that's just like I'm 51 years old, shouldn't be 52. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Sure. And, it, and it's awesome stuff. And Thank you guys you. need to come out and see it. The Hobbelinas play from 5 to 545. At the 10th annual KNON Fort Worth Blues Fest. Again, tickets are on sale right this minute at our website at KNON.org. They also have some printed out and available for sale over at Lola Saloon where the fest is held. You want to get them in advance because they are more at the door. So, um, two stages of music. One band stops, the next band starts because we can do that with two stages. Start, doors open at noon, music starts at noon, and it goes until. About nine o'clock that night. Is there food? I think so, but I haven't heard. I was supposed to meet with Jesse today here, who I'm working. He had to go over to Arlington, <laughs> okay, and okay. you know. So I think that there will be some. I think he mentioned barbecue. Yeah. I don't have a name of where, or whatever, but that's a long day. I need food to be there. Yeah, turkey so, legs. Yeah, well, turkey legs or something. There needs to be that, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure that there is going to be that. I know we have some vendor booths this time too, if people. Oh, okay. Which Very cool. um, this has become the kind of fest where even if people aren't playing, the artist. They call me and say, hey, man, can I just come and hang out? 
Yeah. And which is great to me because that's a successful festival. If the musicians want to come over and just hang out on their day off. Yeah. That's that means everybody's having yeah. a good time. I love it. I get to see a lot of my friends. Yeah, yeah. So there is a great lineup for this, folks, and we definitely want you over there to be part of it. You need to witness the Javelinas if you have not been assaulted by them yet. <laughs> is that the right word? I don't they, know. They, they, <laughs> for they, that kid, it was. Dave, Dave Pippen <laughs> says watching you is like being charged by a rhino or something like that. Was okay, I'll take that. But it should be charged by a javelina. Yeah, Pippin, pay attention. <laughs> get on, get on the ball with that, dude. I mean, if we do, if we do another record. I think, I think we're gonna. I think I'm thinking about calling it the other white meat. Javelinas <laughs> or wild pigs. There so, you go. You know. So, what kind of stuff are you guys gonna play on Sunday then? Do you know yet? Is it just gonna be? Are you gonna decide when you get there? Well, one of the things that I learned, I played with, like I said before, I played with Marsha for six and a half years. I never once saw a. Never once did I ever see a set list in front of me. We looked at Marsha, and Marsha just played what she wanted to play. Sure. She could read a crowd real well. She could read what people wanted to hear. And so that's kind of how I do it, too, how we do it. Um, I'm, you never know. There might be a set list up there. But what I since it's a blues festival, we're probably going to do a lot more blues-oriented stuff. Uh, we're going to try to do all our originals. We do a lot of covers, like you said. I mean, we play gigs that are three hours long, so we, yes. we don't have three hours worth of original material. Yeah. And um, I don't think anybody would want to hear three hours of our of original material. I think anymore. you're wrong. I think you're getting there. Maybe. I you think you and you'll you'll be there. I think we we got a strong ten minutes of original material. <laughs> No, actually, we got we got a lot more than that. But there's just certain Kenley songs. is somewhere right now shaking his head. Yeah, no, Taz probably is. <laughs> Kenley's probably like he's right.